So here's a real-time example of Tactica in that moment. We're doing this narrative thing. We're doing this theory, theory hammer, math hammer on the channel here, talking about tactics, trying to cut down the learning curve, trying to give you some new ideas for your wargaming system, trying to give you the tools, the tech, the talent to defeat that guy at your gaming club, where if you lose, you're going to hear about it all week, right? Literally your next game to go in there and win. But transferring all of this, this Tactica in that moment to real-time application, that's the bridge. And I wanted to share an example from a recent board game, RuneBound 2nd Edition, this Sunday, an awesome Sunday of RuneBound. And there was a moment where I found myself having to make a decision. And I said, this is a great example of Tactica knowing when to do it, how to do it, and if you want to do it. So a little bit about Runebound. You're trying to stop the resurrection of a dragon lord, of an ancient dragon. So you're going around the realm and you're adventuring. There's green gems, yellow, blue slash purple. Looks blue to me, but it's kind of purple. And then red, and red is the end game. And of course, these scale in difficulty. So you land on a space and the color of the gem illustrates the difficulty. You draw a card from the adventure deck, and it could be an encounter, it could be a quest, it could be an event in the land, and you resolve it. So I was fighting some spiders, and the reward for defeating the spiders, so the reward is you get some experience points that you can trade in to level up various attributes. You will get gold and or some other story reward or, or a power that you can use temporarily. Most of the time it's gold, and gold is important because what you're trying to do, of course, is not only level up your stats, but also purchase gear, magic items, artifacts, potions, equipment. But Runebound is interesting in that it also lets you recruit a party of followers, and they have abilities and synergies. So gold is a very, very important part of the game, getting gold and spending it optimally in the various cities. So I defeat these cave spiders, and now I have a choice. I have a choice. Do I take one gold piece? Now, this was a green encounter. Green encounters are generally one gold. Um, yellows, two to three. Blue, five. So they, they scale up, right? One gold for a green encounter. And I won't say early in the game the green encounters are easy. Depends on some tactics. Depends on a couple of different ideas. But one gold. Okay, I can take one gold or the theme of the game, defeating these spiders, freeing a potential ally from the webs in the cave, I could draw from the market deck. And if I draw an ally, I get to keep the ally. Now, the market deck is what's used to spawn uh, the cards that you can purchase in the game. There's a number of cities, and when you visit a city and you shop, you do the market phase, you draw a card flip it over, and that's what's available to purchase. Now, this deck is, is pretty big. I've got the core deck for the game, and I've got the Relics of Legend expansion playing with that also. So we've got some more followers, we've got some more artifacts, we've got some more weapons, some more magic items, some more potions, some more everything. I love expansions. It's a pretty thick deck. It's a pretty big deck. You can see it there. So the question, the tactical question is... Making an informed decision in that moment. Now, what's the correct decision? Of course, depends on the other players, depends on what's going on, depends on if we're at the start of the game, mid game, end game, depends on a lot of things. But being able in wargaming real time to make the correct decision. So here's the question. I had to set up that, that framework. You're looking at the deck and there's the spider card on the splash screen here for the vlog. Do you take the one gold, do you take the one gold, or do you go for the random and potentially draw an ally? Now, if you don't draw an ally, then uh, it goes to the discard, and you don't get the gold piece. You do get the experience point. What do you take? Now, I'm playing narrative, which means I'm just trying to have some fun. We're trying to do this Runebound Universe thing. We've got a good group going on, and um, never tell me the odds. In old school ad and I'm chaotic neutral. I want to see what happens. I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to gamble. 
Maximus, are you not entertained? So, of course, I'm going to go and try and draw the ally. Of course I am. I'm going to go for it. See what happens. But was that the correct tactical decision? Was that the correct tactical decision? So, a couple of other things, just understanding and, and looking at this, I can guarantee get one gold piece. There is something known about the known. I get that. I bank that. I've got that. The risk versus reward, if I don't draw an ally, it's gone, right? I don't get any reward. If I do draw an ally, uh, a varying cost, there's a good chance that just the, the economy of the game, let's say I draw a, a four gold piece ally, a two gold piece ally, um, that's not only something that I get to add that ally, but it would cost me that gold to buy that ally. So I'm, I'm ahead of the game, right? I've made more. It would, it would take two or three encounters, green level encounters, one gold piece encounters to purchase that ally. If I get that ally, I can sell it back also for half. So even if it's an ally I don't need or eventually, there is more of a, a reward in taking the ally. But we have to look at the deck. So we're at the beginning of the game. That deck is packed that deck is packed with everything. You can see it's really thick within there. Allies, weapons, artifacts, potions, armor, weapons, all that type of stuff. What are the odds of drawing an ally? Um, pretty good, right? Pretty good. We, we talk about counting cards and getting this idea. Um, if we were mid-game, now I, the deck would be reduced. I, I would have to look or, or make an assessment based on the cities and their city spaces where you stack the cards in the market, like what's out in play right now? What's in the cities? If there are not a lot of uh, allies in those cities, then at that point, probably it's in my favor that there might be an ally in there. But if a lot of the allies are out, the hirelings, then do I want to then take the one gold piece? So this is what we're exploring and what we're looking at. The other what if, though, is if you draw an item, it gets discarded. It gets, it gets put back under. So there is a possibility that um, I can draw a card and it's something like the Dawn Blade or um, Mace of Kelos, something really powerful. Well, now that's cycled out of play versus if I draw it in a market deck, even if I can't afford it, it's there and I can work and quest for it. So the other final piece would be it is only one gold piece. Risk versus reward. We're not talking about um, a yellow encounter or even, let's say, a blue encounter where the reward might be three or five gold pieces. So now if, I'm, if I have a choice between guaranteed five gold pieces and, let's say, possibly drawing an ally, I think I would take the gold. And, and just for a frame of reference, um, the powerful runes and powerful swords in the game that are end game gear, they're about nine to ten gold pieces each. So if we're talking about drawing a, a blue encounter or a purple encounter, depending on how you interpret that color, and you have a choice, take five gold or draw and possibly get something, I think I probably would go for the five gold pieces. So this is an example of what's in play, the size of the card. What are we talking about? Beginning game, mid game, end game, and looking and making a decision based on possibilities, trying to control the randomness, control as in understand it, and make an informed decision. So what would you do within that real-time tactica? Again, I gambled, I drew an ally, and that kind of worked out, although a little bit of sad face because later on the ally got killed fighting one of the dragons somewhere in the mountains, but the gamble paid off. But it equally could have not paid off but we're only talking about one gold piece from that perspective.